The development of America as an industrial giant begins with the greatest of all our manufacturing entrepreneurs, Andrew Carnegie. His story begins in 1848 when he arrived in Pittsburgh as a poor 13-year-old Scottish immigrant. One of the reasons that he became such a fabled figure in the American past is that there was a lot about him that was genuinely of the Horatio Alger story, which is a story of luck as well as pluck. And Carnegie was not just smart and energetic and imaginative and all those other things. He was extremely lucky. He was dipping bobbins in vats of oil in the cellar of a textile factory in Pittsburgh when he heard of a job at the telegraph office and he himself said it was like Fortunatus he said my good fairy found me in a cellar among vats of oil and lifted me away before the age of business schools two of the best places to learn about American business were the telegraph office and the railroad Carnegie worked on both Carnegie controlled all phases of his business from the iron ore ranges and ovens which made coke for his steel furnaces to the railroads carrying finished products to customers his rivals tried to make deals with him or buy him out. I can make steel cheaper than any of you and undersell you, he told them. Why should I present you all my profits? Even offers from the great financier J.P. Morgan were rebuffed. In an effort to regulate the industry, Morgan wanted to put together a trust to reduce the risk of investment. Carnegie saw no reason to stop growing since he could sell all the steel he could make. But finally, at the pinnacle of success, Carnegie surprised followers by stepping aside. He sold out to Morgan, who in 1901 formed United States Steel, the first billion dollar corporation in history. The search for completely interchangeable parts that had started with Eli Whitney and Samuel Colt was finally achieved 70 years later by the founder of the Cadillac Company, Henry Leland an innovative and meticulous machine maker. The quality of his cars was legendary, and so was his precision manufacturing techniques, which produced the first truly interchangeable parts. Mass production became possible, and nowhere was it demonstrated as convincingly as in the automobile industry. At the same time, Frederick Taylor, father of the stopwatch and clipboard approach to factory life, had begun making time and motion studies of machine shops. Taylor envisioned that the chaotic factories of the present could be transformed into an industrial utopia in which man and machine would function like clockwork. In one famous experiment, the man with a stopwatch stood over the laborer, telling him when to walk, when to lift, when to rest. Because of this pacing, Taylor increased the man's productivity from 12 and a half to 47 tons. Frank Gilbreth, took these studies one step further and used motion pictures to record people at work. Lights were attached to workers' hands and their movements were studied to eliminate wasteful motions. Using rates of the fastest workers, standards were set for the simplest tasks. By 1911, company after company became tailorized. Time and motion techniques became the norm all over Detroit. In the last few decades, a new revolution has been changing the nature of American manufacturing. An entrepreneur named Joseph Engelberger was one of the first to see it as a new solution to some very old problems. He is widely known as the father of industrial robots and given credit for being the prime mover behind the creation of robotics. He is the founder and former president of Unimation Incorporated, the world's first industrial robot company. The very first robot that went to work was in a plant in Turnstead, New Jersey. It went to work at a die casting machine. Uh, the machine brings two dies together, hot metal spits out. If the human operator doesn't duck aside, he may be burned by the hot metal. We decided this is an ideal location for a robot. After the first robot, there was still great skepticism. In fact, Engelberger's company, Unimation, did not turn a profit until 14 years after their first sale. The robotics breakthrough came in the early 1970s and continued into the 80s as hundreds of American companies explored their uses and placed orders. A General Motors study revealed that industrial robots priced between $40,000 and $100,000 cost approximately $6 per hour to operate less than one-third the cost of the workers they replaced. 
Today, there are over 120,000 robots in the world, 75,000 of them in Japan alone. These are the challenges of the future. Will foreign competition and automation generate ever greater unemployment? Can technology create as many jobs as it destroys? How difficult will it be for the workers to move from the jobs of the past to the jobs of the future? Difficult questions. Questions which will be faced and answered by the determination and the innovations of our next generation of entrepreneurs.